talking about walking stick or hiking stick self-defense, a simple self-defense tool that you can use if you hike, if you're outside a lot and you want an extra layer of protection, learning how to use your hiking staff, whether it's like a lecky trekking pole or you have a wood pole like this. This is a Japanese Joe, which doubles as a walking stick or a hiking staff. Any kind of walking stick will work for self-defense if you train some basic, simple techniques. Those are the ones I'm gonna show you now. First, I'm gonna start with a simple warm-up. I've been running into a lot of people who are prepping and getting ready for whatever they think might come next. I've always done that as part of just a simple plan to be always prepared, having extra food, extra water, light source, a bug out bag at the house, a get home bag in the car, all those basic things and prepping for self-defense. Hello, Garen, it's good to see you. Makes a lot of sense. Learning how to use the self-defense tools that you can carry with you, everyday carry. Put this one here. Hello, David, it's good to see you. David's in the UK, turning side to side. Wherever you are, it's common sense to learn how to use simple self-defense tools like the hiking stick for self-defense. Just gives you an extra layer of prote protection. You might concealed carry if that's your thing. And then in addition to that, want to learn how to use a walking stick or a cane, a hiking pole, a hiking staff, all those simple self-defense tools. I'm going to show you how to keep it super simple, but I always want you to do these motions first to warm up the body, going from side to side. Good. Um, uh, your, your hand is in pain. I understand. Go a little bit slower. I understand all about pain, pain from training. I'd rather have pain from training than pain from getting smashed because I haven't properly prepared my self-defense tools. Learning how to use a hiking staff for self-defense. If you give me more specifics about how your hand is in pain, I can maybe help you with that a little bit. A lot of times learning how to stretch it out will help get the blood flow in and heal that up. Now you've done a proper warm-up. Let's talk about simple, basic principles of self-defense using your hiking staff. Again, this is the Japanese Joe, which is about 54 inches. This is specifically made for self-defense. This is a self-defense, quantum protector self-defense, hiking staff. You can see the link below if you wanna see it. It's called a Joe, J-O. It's as simple as pointing your thumb at the threat, creating distance between me and the person who means to do me harm, between me and the threat. I point my thumb and now I'm going to thrust. Thrusting will create distance, moving him away from me. The way that this works is you have this hard piece of your hiking staff or your hiking pole you're gonna stick that right through their middle. Either the middle here, that soft tissue in the solar plexus or coming up into the throat, that's more permanent self-defense, or coming into the face. It's very effective when you make it simple and explosive. Immediate, direct, and explosive. Look at your target, point your thumb, thrust. That's number one. If it's in your back hand, you're gonna lift this hand next to your face. You can, you're using your hiking staff for self-defense, lift it up, Bring it into this other hand so you have good control and power and simply thrust either straight into his throat, straight into his face, down at an angle into his body, even lower into his lower body. You're gonna stick him on the ground very quickly for self-defense. Those are two basic moves. For review, the staff is between me and the threat. Point the thumb, simple thrust. If it's in the back hand, lift the hand, get it into the other hand, Simple thrust. Keeping your self-defense simple means it's always going to work when you need it. Vic's here. Hello, Vic. It's good to see you again. Practice on a target. Practice on a tree. Practice in the air. As long as you practice your simple self-defense tool, point, thrust, lift, thrust. And then if you're carrying it this way with it in your hand as you're walking, maybe you're not needing it for your balance for hiking. Maybe you happen to just be holding it in your hand this way. As you're walking, maybe you're in the city, maybe you're in the backyard, you're around your house, maybe you've been a prepping for things and now uh, stuff hits the fan and you need to go home and protect your family and stand guard. In addition to the other tools for self-defense you might have, you find yourself with a stick. From this position, I can turn my palm up so that one hand is up, one hand is down, and I can thrust here, I can strike coming down at an angle, Think about chopping into a tree, into the neck, into the temple, into the shoulder, anything I can remove or destroy for self-defense, coming straight down on top. I can let it slide very easily and very quickly. This is the, one of the things that I would like you to practice. Magnus is here from Sweden. Hello, Magnus. 
It's good to see you again. Practice sliding your hand and changing which length is forward. Is it that front length? Now look how much distance I have between me and the thread. If he's got a knife, I've got a long piece of hickory that's going to stop him before he even gets close. I can come straight in. I can come straight to the side. I can come down on top. I can lift him up under off the ground, coming between his legs or up under his chin. I can sweep the legs all in this position. If I wanted to change hand position, now I have a chopping, striking weapon. I can also thrust with it in this position. So practice that. Start in the hand, the back hand, either position. Get it here. Practice sliding, striking. Practice sliding, thrusting, swinging, or sweeping, taking out the leg. Put it in the front hand. Put it in this position, same hand position. Practice slide it to here. Thrusting, slide it down, sweeping, slicing through the middle, bringing it up right under his chin, right off the ground, right between the legs. And if you like the idea of a simple self-defense tool, please give me a thumbs up. I want to make more of these simple self-defense tools on the walking stick, the hiking stick, the everyday carry cane that some people have, and then the shorter things. And then some of you I know like to have those expandable batons. I'm going to talk about those in another video, but I'm going to focus on simple self-defense tools. What can you use? What's around you? Even a pencil, a uh, marker, especially those dry erase markers. Those are very strong. You can use um, any kind of simple stick for self-defense. I love to teach some, uh, stick self-defense. If you want to learn stick self-defense, give me the thumbs up. Leave me some comments. What stick do you want to learn how to, to train with? What stick do you want to practice with? Right now, we're using the hiking stick or the walking stick. From here, point the thumb, thrust, slash down, change hand positions, bring it through, change hand positions, striking through with this thrusting motion, down on top, up under the groin, but put your strikes together in combination as you practice. One other thing that I'd like you to try to do is change your hand position so that if you have your right hand down and your left hand up, you now can change to here and to here. Garen says a length of galvanized conduit. Yeah, use a pipe. Turning it this way and turning it this way. This way and this way. It's all self-defense. What simple self-defense tools can you use? Uh, compression elbow forearm pad, massage deeply the nerve. Don't massage too deeply on the nerve. You've got to be more gentle, more gentle when you do those nerves. A lot of times when I tell people because tendonitis here, or if your hand hurts, you get a lot of pain, they get it, uh, they get in there, they start to crank on it a lot, and then you just inflame the nerve, you make it hurt more. Instead, make nice, small circles, go through, circle, and then on the hand especially, gently pulling back each finger like this. If you use sticks for self-defense, if you do spinning or striking, good morning, T, it's good to see you, then sometimes you overwork these tendons and it gets tight or it gets painful in the wrist, or it gets painful in the hand, you can release a lot of that just by this basic shaking motion, just opening, gets blood to flow in there. The plasma, the oxygen that's in the blood helps to heal those tendons, those ligaments, those muscles that get overworked, get the inflammation out, flush them out. Just go back and forth, do that a little bit. And then of course, holding here and pressing up. Don't crank your hand down, push your elbow straight. Hold here, push your elbow straight. That's gonna help with a lot of that tightness from the elbow all the way down to the wrist. Good morning, David, it's good to see you. Said you enjoyed the videos. Um, the grip cuts. These grip cuts here just help me hold this a little bit better, but that's not all. These are also shark teeth. Think about when this hits flesh coming through, that's going to, for self-defense, rip. So that's why this is a more uh, spe specific, this is the Quantum Protector, Self-Defense Joe, Self-Defense Staff, it's in that first length. That's why they're here though, that allows you to hold it really tight. Sinjin Man says, arm stopped working at once, injured it while working on a car door, hit the funny bone. Yeah, you hit and inflame a nerve, then sometimes you'll lose use of it. But don't immobilize it, don't just hold it. Gently move it, even if it's painful. You wanna to start to move it a little bit, use heat and ice, alternating you know, a few minutes with heat and then a few minutes later with ice. Get it? It's all about circulation of blood. 
Circulation of blood will heal just about everything. An octagonal staff, Garen says octagonal staff, um, that's more traditional. That's the quarter staff from European martial arts. They're great. I love them. I don't have any here with me now, but in Ohio, the last martial arts school I had, I had a lot of octagonal staffs. They're usually a heavy, heavier staff. It's a little bit bigger diameter, has a good, nice grip. And that, those, um, those, those, uh, the octagon, that gives you more to grip. You can get a good grip on something like this though, just the way, just the way it's made. So you keep it nice and tight, as long as your grip is strong. And the warm up that we did, that's gonna build your grip strength. All right, I wanna talk about one more way that I want you to practice striking. But I wanna review thrusting first, because thrusting is gonna be the fastest, most direct response when he pulls out a weapon or he starts to come to you, or you have multiple attackers, and you've gotta get rid of him fast so that you can address the other thugs that are trying to close in on you and take what you have. If you're a prepper, you've been prepping all this time, everybody, you've been telling everybody, I got uh, six months of food, I got a full year of water, I got ways to make fire, I've got, I've got my heat light source, I've got my, and then they all come to your house because they didn't prep, right? And then you're standing there defending your stuff. You have to pick this up. The first thing I want you to do is move him out of the way and then strike this way, practice striking back this way. That's three separate strikes, all with the same grip. It's a straightforward thrusting strike. It's a downward angular chopping strike, and it's almost like a simple punch coming through horizontally, and they can be as high as the head, as low as the groin, down to the legs. All, of the, all three of those strikes can be done that way, but there's a fourth strike that I want you to work on, a fourth strike, I almost put five fingers, fourth, which is this simple thrusting motion. And this came out of the question you asked me a lot, which is how do you block? You can block up, you can block down, you can clear to the side, you can clear the other way. There are many ways to do circular blocking motions this way and this way with both the front end of the staff and the back end of the staff. And these are all, uh, these are all blocks. Those are all things that you might do if you were doing Aikido and you're learning the Joe staff or Aikido or you're doing Jodo. Those are all good. And at the same time, I don't want you to block. I don't want you to focus on blocking when you don't have to. I would rather you hit him over and over again, make him stop hitting at you. And every time he comes forward to hit or stab or grab, he's getting blasted back. So instead of blocking, I want you to blast. You can learn blocking, but learn blocking for the martial arts aspect of it, the esoteric aspect. Learn how all this cool stuff works, just in case you gotta fight somebody with a sword and you get transported back in time 300 years ago. Then, uh, you're welcome, David, thanks for being here. David said, thanks for uh, sharing some knowledge. You're welcome, it's my pleasure. But blast, blast instead of block. He comes in, he's getting ready to hit you with a knife, stab you in your body, instead of trying to parry that knife. Maybe he was doing a fake out, he's gonna go, because he's practiced that. And all of a sudden you're here, and then the knife's up on you there. But if you do that instead, and you knock him back, or you go, you stick this hard piece of hickory straight through his face for self-defense, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's coming in with, with the second strike because his body is moving back as he's coming with that strike. Because you just struck him there, that gave you some distance to add in a couple more strikes or 10 more strikes or 50 more strikes because the fight's not over until you win. Vic says, what happens if the attacker grabs the staff? When you have two hands on the staff, you're gonna twist the staff, twist the staff, turn and drop. So if his hand is here, he grabs it in the middle, he grabs it on the side, doesn't matter, you turn. If this is his hand, look what happens when that happens. His hand turns like this. There's very little room that my wrist can bend this way. If he turns it here and then he pushes it down, that's going to immediately collapse my grip. It's gonna hit all those nerves in there. And this piece of the hickory is gonna split me right down the middle of my forehead. So if he grabs your staff, turn and drop. But it's gotta be forceful. And if you need to, if he's super strong and he's expecting it, turn the other way or pull as he starts. When you pull, that forces him to pull back. Pull it in, when he pulls back, push. You pull in, he pulls back, push, turn, strike. And if you practice it, I promise you this will become the way that you do it for real. It will work for you when you practice it. 
pull, it's just, it's like it's the principle of judo, right? You're using his weight, his motion, the principle of Aikido, jiu-jitsu, it's all the same. It's give and take. It's it pull, push, pull, push. You pull, that forces him to pull back, then you go with it. That makes all, and think about where his force is. His force is in this way. His force isn't stopping that. So you snap this up, all of a sudden his hand or both hands maybe are like this, and then this stick is coming down right in his face. And I've made a few videos where I have somebody with me. I made one where I have this young man who's uh, easily four inches taller than me and a big young guy. And, and he, I had him help me demonstrate it. And he wasn't, yeah, old, uh, Garen says old school judo. He wasn't going to let me have it, which is exactly what I asked. I said, don't, don't make it easy for me just for the video. Give me some resistance. Now, he gave me a lot of resistance. So what I had to do was move my whole body, turn my shoulders and my hips because he's holding with his hands and he's really, really strong with his hands. Hello, Sensei Emmett, old school judo. Judo was my first martial arts as a little kid. Using your whole body to turn and step beats his hand strength, beats his arm strength. It's a simple principle. However much you weigh, however strong your core and back muscles are, your leg muscles are against his hands and wrists. I don't care if he's got the strongest arms in the world, your body's gonna be stronger all together. And when you practice, that's why you practice these moves. Turn, strike, turn, strike, turn, strike, over and over. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Like when I was a young Marine in the Marine Corps, um, Hello, Mitchell. Hey, Doug. It's good to see you. I saw your call, but I was in the middle of teaching a bunch of little kids. I'll get back to that. I haven't listened to the message yet. I wanted to make this real quick. I literally have a window of 20 minutes between classes, so I want to work with you guys a little bit. But turn, strike. You practice that over and over. You're going to do that. It's going to be, uh, David says, simplify. Simplify, David. It's muscle memory. You're not even going to have to think about it. You won't think about it. You'll just respond. Prepare or panic. For all of those of you who are also passionate about prepping, uh, you're watching the news, you're seeing all of the shortages, you're going to the grocery store, you're going to the Walgreens like I did last night, you went to CVS Pharmacy like I did this morning, and you see row after row of empty or mostly empty shelves. And then you see the prices of everything going up. Gasoline down here is now over three bucks. That's, <laughs> for me, I fill up twice a week. That's 180 bucks for me. I know it seems like a lot, but there's a lot of driving that I have to do to keep all the balls in the air, right? Keep the plate spinning. But, and I'm not complaining, I'm just saying I'm paying attention, you're paying attention, you're prepping with extra water, you're prepping with, uh, for you know, food shortages, you're prepping for gas shortages, you're prepping if they have another, some, some of these uh, rolling blackouts because there are more of these attacks on the infrastructure, you're prepping for all those things. And if you do, then you have, you have to, Prepare your body. Keep your body healthy. Exercise as much as you can. Eat as healthy as you can. You know, do some deep leg, uh, deep knee bends, some squats. Do some jogging in place. If that's punch across the body, stretch everything out. Do that every single day. And then get your self-defense tools out and practice with those. Practicing spinning, even if you go over the wrist, like a wrist roll, that's not necessarily just for fancy uh, martial arts. That's a good way to develop spatial awareness, timing and distance, proprioception. So you can do all those things, but then practice your striking. And when you do, practice with full speed, full power, full commitment every single time after you warm up so you don't get injured. And then, yeah, balance training. One of my favorite balance training. This is for all of you who are uh, either older or you're not as active as you used to be or you were not an athlete in school. This is one of the most important things you can do. Move to the side, move back in, move to the other side, move back in. Take steps at first. And the reason is, this is activating those glutes on the side, your side bum muscles, but then start to move faster. All of your fighting should be side to side. And you should be going back and at an angle, back and at an angle, or in into the angle, in into the angle, whether it's with your staff or if you have to fight with your hands. And if you practice those things, we're going back up the camera. Sorry, I didn't give you that, that uh, heads up. But if you practice with those things, then you'll do those naturally. And that should be in your prepper toolkit. You have a prepper toolkit that includes matches and batteries 
and light sticks and I mean, you name it, right? There's no end to all of the, those rabbit holes. If you've been prepping for as long as I have, and it's not for the end of the world, it's just for like a couple of weeks, or maybe um, like, I, like I've got so much coffee because I see the price of coffee going up. I don't want to have to pay. And I don't want to have to cut back on my coffee because I, I like my coffee, right? So I buy a little in advance. You do stuff like that. You should also be getting your body healthy. Do a couple push-ups. If you can't do them on the ground, do them against the wall. And then when it comes to these strikes with your hiking stick for self-defense, this simple self-defense tool, hiking stick, thrusting, angular strikes, horizontal strikes, um, lifting vertical strikes, vertical strikes down, up under the chin, up under the groin. Maybe he's reaching out, he's got a knife, he's trying to punch, he's trying to grab, he's got a gun, bringing it up this way. And you say, well, you can't beat a gun with a stick. Of course you can't. But well, what else are you gonna do? Just stand there and get shot? <laughs> but when you do all those things, if you're also moving to the side, you're gonna have greater chances of surviving the self-defense fight than if you just are fighting in this same simple front back, front back. You're gonna get hit, you're gonna get smashed to the ground. Learn how to move to the side, move to the side, move to the side. And then every time you're fighting, move to the side. Hit him, hit him two or three times and then move to the side and let him go by, smash him on the way by for self-defense. And you get that with those side-to-side -side lateral moves. Also, that keeps you from getting injured as you get older because almost all of the broken hips and busted knees that old people get are when the little frou-frou dog, you know, everybody's got these little dogs now, or the grandkids come by, or uh, the, the kids are playing in the house, and then you try not to step on them, or you step on a Lego in the middle of the night, or a toy in the middle of the night, and you move real fast to the side, everything falls apart because you haven't done it in 100 years. So practice your lateral movement, side to side. And if you have a hiking stick, this can give you extra support. Step in, step out, step in. Just moving side to side, side to side. Then later, Get it in your fighting position. Later, get in your fighting position, add a few strikes. Strike, strike, move to the side. Strike, strike, and you'll get really good at it. I don't want you to be fancy dancy, flitting around like a fairy. Me, not, being like a fairy in the fairy tale, like uh, t Tinkerbell. I don't want you to look like Tinkerbell, flitting around, buzzing in people's ears with your staff. What I want <laughs> is, I want you to be able to move, boom, boom, bam. Move quickly to the side, boom, boom. And as they go by, take them out, right? Not, not bouncing around like a, what's, what's a better word? I, I always think of a fairy because they fly around. Um, a sprite, a wood nymph. I don't know, whatever the things are that, that, that flit around and seem to have very little power and a lot of annoyance. Just the, the, the power, I want you to be like a, Think of like a, a tiger in the wild, right? And he goes in and he grabs the thing by the neck and rips it out. And he has to twist and spin and grab him on the run. I want you to be able like that. I want you to be able to move. Yeah, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Thank you for that. Because we look at butterflies and we don't think they look like uh, Tinkerbell. Right, I don't anyway. I see a butterfly, I see this majestic, these big wings, those big pectoral muscles. <laughs> and he's getting ready to knock you out like... Uh, Jackie Rob, not Jackie Robinson, what's his name? Muhammad Ali. All right, anyway. Yeah, walk softly and carry a big stick. That's one of my favorite sayings too. And that's all this is. It's a simple self-defense tool. It's walking stick for self-defense. This is a Hickory Joe. It's the quantum protector in that first link below. You guys have been awesome. Give me the thumbs up. If you liked it, give me the thumbs down. If you didn't, leave me feedback either way. What else do you want to work on? And I have a question for you. What are you doing? If you prepare, if you're a prepper, and you're preparing because you don't know, hopefully nothing ever happens. I like to be an abundant prepper. I like to think of a mind of abundance, not scarcity. I don't like to worry about stuff in that way. So if I put things to the side, I put a little bit here, a little bit there, then I don't have to worry about it. If stuff hits the fan, then I'm, I'm prepared. I have enough to share. So if you're also into that mode, you're an abundant prepper, prepper. You're, not, you're an abundant prepper. What do you like to keep in abundance around you so that if something does happen, there is a shortage or a slowdown or another lockdown, you're totally prepared to help yourself and others. Put that in the comments below and let's create a community and let's share that way. You've got, it's been awesome. Get yourself a hiking staff, a piece of wood, 
some, uh, some corrugated metal, some, uh, not corrugated metal, the, the long pole, the uh, pipes, whatever it is you need to practice with. Get yourself a broom, cut the head of the broom off or a mop stick and practice some of these moves so that if you have to and you um, have prepared everything else, prepare your body, prepare your self-defense skills, you pick up a weapon for self-defense if your other weapons fail and or you need a left, less lethal option. This is a bit mighty lethal though, but you can do so many things here and just create distance. Create distance, but only if you practice. So practice with your hiking stick for self-defense, your simple self-defense tools, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much. Oh, and give me the thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't. Yeah, ammo is one of the best things that you can prepare with because you can trade it for almost anything else. Great tip. Thank you. I'll see you guys in a little bit.